Good morning, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. It's Saturday morning. Thought I'd make a quick video real quick in response to a question I had from a, a viewer in one of my comments in one of my last couple of videos. Um, but before that, payment is due. I heard somebody a shout out. Won a hat last night from HVAC Shop Talk, or night before last. And uh, Zach Ciota, HVAC Shop Talk. He's got a couple other channels. Check out those channels if you haven't seen them. They're real good. Um, I owe him now a Redneck Barbecue Lab t-shirt. So I'm going to get that in uh, double XL. I'm not sure how tall Zach is. But uh, I know they shrink a little bit probably. But anyway, I owe him that t-shirt. May throw something a little extra in there. Anyway, Zach's channel is good. Watch that. And uh, puts out some pretty good information. So the question I have was what, what equipment would I install on my house? You, I'll tell you later what's on my house, but you can't determine or decide how you're gonna what you're gonna provide for your customers based on what you put on your house. Um, you have to know where your customers, where are they at? Where are you at? Are you in a large metropolitan area where there's money, nice neighborhoods, uh, opportunities there to cash in a little bit on some high-end equipment, or are you rural? Um, like Raleigh, North Carolina, where I'm at, there's a mix of everyone from one end of the financial scale to the other, and you've got to be ready to deal with that. Have options available to deal with that as far as equipment, questions, things they may call you and request that they've researched and they, they want that system on their house. You may live 30 minutes south of, of that area in a more rural location, and it's keep it simple, stupid. They're not going to spend the same money down there on a system that they're going to spend up there. So it depends really on where you're at to begin with. Um, the, I, I guess the type of product or the quality, not necessarily the quality, but the, the, the extravagance, the bells and whistles, what you're going to be, you know, you're going to be able to support those things when they, when they crash and burn uh, from your location. Because if you're driving to Raleigh to pick up an XV system and sell it and install it on a house and you live uh, down Newton Grove area, an hour south of Raleigh where it's just rural, not a lot of resources when it comes to heating and air, suppliers, things like that, and then that thing break down on you on Saturday and you don't have parts or you're not familiar with it, and now you've got an hour one-way trip Monday morning to go get a part. So, and then back, uh, you got to take that into consideration. But I'm more of a keep it simple, stupid. I don't, I don't need a a 20 sear system on my house. I don't need an inverter. I don't need all these sensors. And I mean, keep it simple. A piston, a piston. I know there's a the difference between our piston and a TXV as far as your efficiency goes. It's not that noticeable. <clears throat> it really isn't. I have a TXV in my system, and I've had that unit in for right at 12 years now, still running like a champ. I only had to replace a blower relay and a contactor in the outdoor unit. Um, I have replaced the capacitor before, but that wasn't from a failure. That was just me checking it, saying it's getting a little weak, throw a new one in there. Um, I've been lucky. So... Uh, but yeah, I've got a piston in the bag waiting for it. If that TXV quits, it's getting a piston going back in it. I'm, I, I don't have time to be running around looking for a TXV. Homeowners, you know, you get, maybe you give them the TXV, obviously. Most everything comes with one now anyway, your low-end equipment. But uh, you've got six manufacturers that really control about 22 or 23 of the products across the board. I mean, just look that up online, Carrier Global. And then look at everything under them. There's about eight, seven or eight different name brands under them from Carrier to Bryant to Payne. And then you get the ICP connection in there with them down to your temp stars and your comfort makers. And your, your list goes on and on. Um, so it's really what's best for your homeowner, not what's best for you as far as what's on your house. 
like I said, I keep it simple, stupid, but you've got to be able to provide a service. So if they call you and they've been doing research and they've got to have a 20 year old system and you've been doing their service for 10 years and going out there twice a year doing their little repairs that come along here and there. And then they decide it's time to replace that system and they've been doing research and they want a, a carrier infinity or a train XV uh, 20. Uh, they want something, you know, modern, Wi-Fi, on the phone. If you can't offer it to them, you're going to find somebody that can, and you just lost your customer. So you have to, you have to, you have to be um, versatile. Um, you can't just say, I'm offering 16 seer single stage heat pumps on every house I go to. It might work a lot, but, you know, it might not either. So... You, you kind of just have to know your area, what the income level is around that area, what people can afford. Um, is it a tech, you know, if you're in a big city, there's a lot of technology there. Maybe those things are appealing. You've got options. Those opportunities will come in that situation. But if you're in a rural area, you know, a lot of people don't want that. They just, they don't want to spend a lot of money. They just want a system they can get some good use out of. It's going to be easy to maintain, easy to come back and fix if they have a problem. Uh, minimal headaches. So as far as manufacturers go, I mean, I, my first job was with a new construction builder or a new construction HVAC company. Um, they had six or seven builders that they installed for uh, back in the early mid 2000s when I started there um, they didn't have it was just me and the one other guy I think we had three at one time but the only reason we were there was to handle the first year warranty issues do startups a uh, little odd and end things like that it wasn't big on bringing in COD type replacement service pre-existing we go out and it, 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 that was his business model put as many units on as many new houses as he could. That's how, and there's companies that, that are like that and they don't really care. After the first year warranty is up, they don't care about coming back and dealing with you. They'll tell you, yeah, we can get there next month and kind of put you in a situation to just call somebody else. Um, they don't have to come out if they don't want to, but that's, they, they, they offer that, yeah, we can get you on the schedule in three or four weeks and then, you know, hope you call somebody else but they were all Goodman systems. And so we had one that was American standard on his houses, but it was three and a half years of Goodman, 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 Goodman. And I just, I don't like Goodman. I wouldn't, Goodman, Amana, it's kind of box box. I don't, I don't, you know, you got, you've got to use a little common sense. Don't get the dirtiest, cheapest thing. I mean, Goodman is the perfect example. You can get on, I can go home, when I get to the house, get on the computer and order a Goodman heat pump and have it shipped to my house without a license. So, there you go. I, I just don't agree with that. So, I, I'm not a Goodman guy. Um, I'm not a high-end guy either. But there, are, there are, there's a customer for that equipment. And if you have them in your area, you need to be prepared to to give them what you give them what they want or they'll find somebody that will you just lost a customer or either you just maybe you just don't want the headache you price out the job and price yourself out of it so and you hope somebody comes in a little cheaper and they call them however, however you want to do that but you just got to be open-minded do your research two or three quality equipments if i was going to have a business and i was going to install equipment i would probably be a trained dealer um, I don't, I, and I would stick to their mid, mid level stuff. I wouldn't use the Tim air handlers, the metal cabinet air handlers, the insulations in them is thin. They sweat in these Southern crawl spaces. It's humid, it's wet. They're gonna sweat. And then you're gonna have that problem to deal with. The, 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 the bug guy comes around and sprays and goes in. By the way, your duct system and your system's leaking water all over the place. Now you've got that headache. Then he's going to call you. Why is it dripping? So the, the, the TAM and GAM air handlers from train, 
they're, the insulation is internal to the cabinet on those. The, uh, they're foamed in, I think, but it does have a plastic, it's pretty, pretty heavy duty composite casing around a metal framed and a metal built air handler. But the drain pans, horizontal left and right, are pre molded in, so you're not going to have drain pan cracks. Problem is with that crap though, you get the TAMs. The TAM X is now the hottest thing. It's getting the TAM 9s going out, and that only works in certain situations. So they're 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 that they're they're setting up that equipment to focus on a certain market of people. So um, the GAM air handler it comes with a TXV in it. But you talk about you know I'm simple stupid. I've got a piston ready to go in mine. I have a TXV now. I love a piston. Pistons don't break. And if you install that system properly, blow those lines out, make sure everything's clean, dryer's good, and you pull a deep vacuum on that thing, put fresh refrigerant in it, don't, don't tie, oh, let me top it off with a pound out of my recovery cylinder. Put on startup day, get that thing started up right, clean, solid vacuum. You're not gonna have a problem with a piston. And if by any chance you do, all you gotta do is recover the system real quick, crack that thing open, pull that piston out, clean it, blow your lines out, change your filter dryer, pull another deep vacuum, get that thing up and running, your restriction's gone. You don't have to order a TXV. You don't have to, uh, you gotta wait, we can't get this fixed today, they don't have any in stock. Piston's right there, all you gotta do is clean it. So that's a benefit. Efficiency difference between a piston and a TXV is not so great that I'm concerned with it. But the TAM air handlers, they've got metal, or I mean, they've got that electronic EV valve in it, little screw valve, it's got the stepper motor, You've got the control board that operates all that. Then you got the two separate sensors, gas and coil sensor, that read back to that board and help it try to maintain superheat while that system's running. You have five components that could fail, and they are there for one purpose. So a TXV is much better than that. At least it's one part. If it needs to be replaced, you can swap that out. There's just there's too many bells and whistles, and there's too many this manufacturer trying to outdo this one and i know the government sets epa or sets your efficiency standards and and all that but this equipment is just getting ridiculous now the the classes the training the you know someone coming out of school <clears throat> now what they've got to deal with in the future with this is you know you might as well go learn how to fly a damn 747 and rewire the cockpit in it then you might have an idea what you can do with this equipment moving forward it's, you know i'm gonna keep it simple stupid stupid but if i was going to have a business and install equipment which i never will do that it's going to be train because they have a nice wide range of options from their minimum efficiency to their maximum different air handlers that you can make combinations with furnaces as well two-stage modulating single stage 80 90 you know and a lot of manufacturers have some different things train has a lot of different things so you've got several different options and combinations that you can put together um, to get a job done um, and make a homeowner happy but I'm not gonna but the flip side I'm not gonna give the cheapest crappiest equipment that's gonna call have I'm gonna be out there two or three times a year and have to I y'all shouldn't I shouldn't have to pay for this. Y'all sold me this. You sold this thing and you started okay, yeah, well, I didn't manufacture it, engineer it, and design it. You know, I don't want to have to deal with those questions. Why is it sweating? Why is it dripping water? So you've got to find a place in the middle that's gonna make the customer happy and not give you such a big headache dealing with service issues in the future. So now if I had to pick my top my three if if they were looking for name brand high-end um they're just they go to the car dealership they don't they don't want the geo they want they want the cadillac okay i'm gonna be trained somebody in the middle of the road maybe i'm gonna go comfort maker or temp star um something along those lines and if it's a rental house a property owner that wants to get the cheapest absolute thing they can have, then it's probably gonna be Goodman at that point. Just get it in, 
get it out, get out and be done with the job, make them happy, make you a little bit of money and get on down the road. So whether that answered your question or not, I don't know. I gave it a shot. So anyway, guys, down in the right-hand corner, subscribe button. If you'll hit that, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Appreciate you guys watching. And um, enjoy your weekend. Have a good one. See you guys next time around.